If you don't remember anything I say, remember this. It is never your turn. Ever. It is never your turn. You don't ever brace for it. You fight like your life depends on it, because why? It does. It does. The shooting happened first in room 206. 206 was essentially ambushed. The shooter made entry, unannounced, unbeknownst to anybody, came in and started shooting up the classroom. Room 211 was where Christina Anderson was. The shooter entered how many times? Three times. Shooter enters in three times unchecked. 100% of the people in room 211 were shot. Approximately 65% of those were killed. Okay, so 65% of that room were shot and killed. 65% of this room is how many people? A lot. A lot. I became a police officer, so I didn't have to do math. <laughs> So, room 207 is another room that was attacked. He went in there once, he tried to go into a second time. After he went in there a second time, what did he find? Those that had not been shot got out. Room 204, a very interesting story. You saw the name Laboon Rescue, and I'm butchering his name. He had a, his name placard on that video showed up very briefly. Does anybody know his story? He was a Holocaust survivor. He was also a professor at Virginia Tech. Having heard, after hearing the gunshots and the commotion, he said to his class, something really bad is happening. I'm going to barricade the door with myself. He literally leaned up against the door and told his students to jump out of the windows. Those that were not able to get out of the windows or refused to get out of the window or whatever the case may be, because he was on the second story, this is the number of people shot in that room because he simply barricaded the door with himself. We know that the shooter shot through the door, killing him, and then was able to make entry into the room. What do we think happened in room 205? They barricaded the door. How many people were shot in room 205? None. Picture this. This is the order that he went. He starts in 206, he goes to 211, he goes to 207, he goes to 204, he goes to 205, is not able to make entry. Why? He's barricaded. Where is he going next? Back to 211. Why does he go back to 211? Because he can. Because he can. If he went in there the first time and was not confronted, he's going to go back a second time not confronted. Why did he choose room 211 for his third time? Because he wasn't confronted. He went in there, saw that nobody else was basically alive, and he shot and killed himself. Does everybody get the point to barricade in place? If you hope and hide, hide and hope, whatever you want to call it, your turn will be coming. You should brace for it because your turn is next. But we're not ever going to do that, are we? Hopefully not after tonight we won't. So that brings us to our third and final option. We're going to defend. Now there's a term up there for legal reasons, and that is if your life is in imminent danger. I'm not an attorney. But I can tell you that a crazy person with a gun at a location shooting people, they're in imminent danger. What does that mean legally? Use whatever you need to use. Okay? Deadly force, whatever you, you need to do, you can do. Attempt to incapacitate the shooter. Go for the gun. Remember, I told you, if he makes entry through that door, the first thing through that door is going to be what? The gun. He's coming in like this. That's the first thing we want to attack. Now, we're at a Lutheran church. To my knowledge, there's no caches of weapons anywhere. And Pastor, if there is, I don't want to know about it. Right? So... What I will tell you is there are plenty of weapons in here to our disposal. What is back there? All kinds of stuff, right? What's up here? Hot coffee, okay? What do we have a room full of? People that are going home tonight, okay? 
Now, the vast majority of us are very law-abiding citizens. Those of you that are not, we'll talk to you after class. <laughs> but these are things we normally wouldn't do during the course of our day. Well, just like we didn't plan on attacking anybody, we also didn't plan on being involved in an active shooter event. So we're going to do things a little bit differently than what we normally would do. We don't go around during the day throwing hot coffee at people, do we? As much as we might like to, sometimes we don't do it. Okay? But the mindset we have has to change. We have to fight like our life depends on it, because why? It does. It does. So what we're going to use is improvised weapons. We're going to commit to our actions like our life depends on it. If this person wants to come here and try to shoot us up, he's going to do it by fighting with me. Okay? And I'm going to do it with as much aggression and with anything I can find at my disposal to incapacitate him. This is immediately where my mindset goes to my two-year-old daughter. I am going home to her every night. And if somebody needs to be sprayed with hot coffee, that's exactly what's going to happen. Case in point, Lieutenant Brian Murphy from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Okay? He was involved in the active shooter event at the Sikh Temple. I'm not going out in the parking lot. I'm not going out like this. I'm not going to let my wife down. I'm not going to let my daughter down. I'm not letting my stepkids down. He said that as he confronted the active shooter. So if you know the story, the active shooter thought he was targeting a Muslim temple. Um, the Muslim community and he basically got along and attacked a bunch of Sikhs that those of you that know the difference know that they're as different as night and day. We didn't say these people were smart, we said they're crazy. He was reciting this in his head as he was shot 15 times. Yes, I said 15. He remains on the job today. Okay? He was shot 15 times and said, I am not going out like this. I'm not letting this crazy person take me away from my family. He fought like his life depended on it, because it did. He survives today. Very quickly, in the interest of time, information provided 911. All we need to know is what he looks like and where's the last place you saw him. We want you to call 911 when you're safe. Not call us and wait for instructions. Your instructions now are avoid, deny, and defend. Okay? ADD. That's your instructions. We want to know what the shooter looks like, to the best of your knowledge, and where's the last place you saw him. Luckily, or excuse me, hopefully you were calling me from way down the street saying, I just left this location. There's a guy with a gun who looks like this. This is the last place I saw him. Hopefully you're long gone when that call arrives. Well, yeah, that call's made, excuse me. When we arrive, yes, there's a bunch of stuff on the screen. This is what we want you to know. We are coming into a situation where we know we may have to get into a gunfight. 